The grain for one cow could feed 20 people directly. We are feeding seven and a half billion people today. The food exists, the cake is not a lie. <laughs> and a large percentage eat inefficient, unsustainable diets, which is fun for now, but it is short-sighted. We are borrowing from the future to feed today. But by 2050, for every four people eating today, squeeze another one at that table with the same amount of food. There'll be 10 billion of us. That's a bit less for everybody. Or we could change our diets, we could live more sustainably. Now we have plant-based meat. Plants are cheaper to make, they're cheaper to buy, and they're better for you. We can still eat burgers, even the occasional steak. We could do better. We are borrowing from the future to eat the way we're eating now. The average American and Kiwi slash New Zealander eats 222 pounds of meat a year. That's 880 quarter pounders, two and a half every single day. That is a lot of money, a lot of cow. One and a half cows per person annually because a thousand pound cow only produces 440 pounds of edible meat. Meat is delicious, it's delectable, but it's also deadly. We make three times the amount of meat today than we did in 1960. That is nearly a 400% increase according to this adorable USDA.gov document. For every pound of beef that we make, we have to use 1,910 gallons of water. For every one gram of beef that we make, 220 grams of CO2 is created. A 2019 study in The Lancet said that if we started farming meat sustainably, we would see a 10% reduction in greenhouse gas. I bring that up because I don't want you to think I'm shaming meat eaters, but if we did cut meat eating, we could reduce greenhouse gas by 50% by 2050. But that might not be enough, of course. If we really want to make the climate change, global warming argument moot, or moot, if you will, we should cut meat eating by 90%. 90. What if instead of eating cows that were raised on pastures, you ate cow meat grown in a plant or a bioreactor, or plant meat that was grown on a farm near your house? We could do better. Also, it's cheaper to eat vegetables, as we learned earlier. So why not just grow a thousand pounds of meat directly? There's this stuff called synthetic meat. You may have heard of it as lab-grown meat or in vitro meat, cultured meat. And it's created by, quote, painlessly harvesting muscle cells from a living cow and then taking those cells and culturing them in a bioreactor. There's a study by Maastricht University that talked all about it. The cells begin to divide from one muscle cell to more than a trillion. Once they're cultured, they can take those natural cells and they will merge into myotubes of about 0.03 millimeters and myotubes are then placed in a ring around a column of gel and the muscle contracts to cause them to grow and the muscle tissue turns into the same stuff that you would find in an animal. And with enough of these strands, we get meat. With no slaughtering, no harm to the animal. One tissue sample from a cow can yield enough muscle tissue to make 80,000 quarter pounders. If you wanna continue eating meat, maybe this is a way that we can get sustainable meat production. In 2013, when I first reported this, it was $300,000 per patty, but it might be $5 in 2021. Could we leave meat behind? Or at least the way we think of it now? According to The Lancet, another study there, if we switch to plant-based diets, we're gonna cut greenhouse gas emissions also by 80% to 2050, remember 80%. Plant-based doesn't mean we can't eat burgers because now we have plant-based meat. Essentially, it's plant-based proteins, fruit and vegetable-based colors and flavors that are processed in such a way to get the texture of meat. And a plant-based meat study by the University of Michigan found that doing meat this way produces 90% less greenhouse gases, 46% less energy use, and 200% less water use. It's not exactly healthier than meat, but it's better for the planet. Come on, one challenge at a time, right? It's still two to three times per pound to make plant-based meat in terms of cost. Beyond Meat's chief growth officer, Chuck Muth, told Vox, First, you have to make a great product. And then second, you have to make it nutritious. And then third, you make it affordable. But that's not all. Because economically, land and water are bigger issues when it comes to meat. According to a study in PLOS One, 38% of our planet is used for food production of some kind. Of the habitable land, it's half half just to make food for the people who live on the other half. Meat takes up more space to build, to make, than plants. Plants don't roam around, they're more compact, they can be grown in cycles to keep the soil healthy, and we don't have to grow a bunch of plants to feed to the plants to make food. You just grow them the first time. A third option for protein might be 
insects. I've done it, it's totally normal. You get far more yield, they're super efficient organisms. It can be a bit off-putting, cricket legs can get stuck in your teeth, but you can make them into protein powders. You can put them in all sorts of stuff. Now we're back to that pill food that I mentioned earlier. But either way, food needs to be rethought and alternative meats might be a good option. Either way though, pill food just sounds terrible. Can I just say this? I love food shows, I love documentaries and food television, I love it all, but pill food? So unappetizing from a visual perspective. If you like food, you should watch the history of food. This show explores the hunter-gatherer lifestyle that created the evolution part of evolution economics and classism that I mentioned earlier. And it's in one of those big budget amazing documentaries on Curiosity Stream, which is so good. Use my link curiositystream.com slash trace right now during their holiday sale and you're gonna get CS for 12 bucks for the whole year. That's a dollar a month, the same price as a dollar cheeseburger. If you find you're sort of full up on food stuff, you can hop over to global warming, physics, under the sea, space exploration, they have got it all. Plus, with my promo code here, you can get CS and you'll get Nebula for a year too. Maybe you've heard me talk about Nebula even in the previous episode. It's so great, we got nominated for a streamy, and it's a streaming service that I helped start with other thoughtful, curious creators. And if you join CS, you get Nebula for free. And by joining, you directly support creators like Jordan Harrod and Renee Ritchie and Patrick Willems and T1J, all sorts of amazing creators. It takes away algorithms and recommendation engines. You just get to watch our videos. And remember, we own the service, so joining supports me and them directly, it's a win-win. Some creators even upload special Nebula-only episodes just for you. So, again, $12 a year, $1 a month thanks to their holiday sale. You can get Curiosity Streams, big budget documentaries, and you can watch us over on Nebula. Only a buck a zoid, and thanks. So, Harvard did this study, how to feed 10 billion by mid-century, and they looked at all sorts of different ways. It was like a big think tank, a super interesting panel. And you can use technology to make farms more efficient. We're doing that now, but not doing it in a sustainable way all the time. You can reduce food waste, which is a big deal. 40% of our food is lost from farm to table. And then of course, once it gets to the table, we waste a significant portion of it in the West. But the biggest way that we can affect the problem with our food systems is that we need to change our eating habits. We need to eat more fish and more plants and less red meat. But how many people could we feed? Like overall, if we were to do everything right, what is the upper limit? Our planet is one little speck. We can't feed everyone forever. More on that next time. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Una Dos of Trace and this series all about where we're going with food and what's going on with our food systems. Make sure that you subscribe for all the episodes. This was episode three of five. There's still two more. Make sure that you check me out over on all the social medias. I have a Patreon. You can you know, go and join, follow, like, subscribe. Thank you so much. Happy, happy, happy holiday. And 2020 is almost over, thank goodness. I am Trace. I'll see you in the future.